context and expectation was stacked against George from the very beginning. There's no accounting for that kind of buildup. That more than 20 year gap between the beginning of Star Wars and the re-beginning with the prequels. You see a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, you are ready. You've been waiting for this movie since you were three years old watching that tape of Star Wars. And then the movie starts. And I hated it, the way it looked. And it was like kind of this sadness went over me and I was like, oh no. If a Star Wars movie were like an asteroid or a meter, then the Phantom Menace would be the kind that killed the dinosaurs. Expectations were unrealistically high. You're gonna see a generation of kids that grew up watching the prequels that didn't feel the same way that we did. You know, we're just the loudest voice in the room. But when you see like Mike Klimo's uh, ring theory stuff, when he's putting these images side by side, there's no way that that's accidental. So it creates this pattern of A, B, C, C, B, A. You start looking for psychological meaning, you start looking for symbolism, and once you start looking for it, it's everywhere. But we actually did more miniatures for the prequels than were done in the original films. There were that many miniatures done on those movies. Nobody hates Star Wars like a Star Wars fan. If you don't like them, there's always Star Trek. It's so over the top. So I got to thinking, it's possible through the prequels that George Lucas might save the world. Why on earth are we complaining about this?